Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Hollywood Shono here, about to give you a Marvel Future Fight YouTube video not streamed on Twitch. In this video, I'm going to give a guide for new players' tips and tricks. Now, one thing I'd like to point out first before we get into any rosters is something in the game called the lab. This is something I actually did not figure out until I was about character level 30. And the way that the shield lab works is that there's four components of it. There's the antimatter generator, which is a component to upgrade various parts in the laboratory. You have the warp device, which basically sends you on missions in order to pull biometrics, which does cost some of the antimatter. A processor, which allows you to craft various things. And then the item shop, which allows you to buy things within the game. So what we're gonna do to start off is we're gonna deploy all four of these just to get it out of the way. So we're gonna do doc on the clock. Now, some people have said, don't do this. One thing I'd like to point out is that by doing this, you can get fragments of characters that are in chess that you cannot otherwise get. So any of the characters that are only available in chess that you can get out of the store, you can actually get by doing this. So this is one reason I do recommend, and you don't need high level characters for earlier missions. Obviously, to some people, this is a waste of antimatter, but in my opinion, it's not because you're only spending a couple thousand, like I think I spent 2,000 there for four missions, and that's free biometrics. You need a lot of biometrics to upgrade your characters. So in my opinion, this is a really good investment. Now, the warp device you can actually upgrade for 16,200 antimatter, 24,600, and there's a level accordance into that, which I need shield level seven to upgrade. So I can actually upgrade the warp device to five, but I'm not going to because I want to upgrade the item shop. Now, the next thing is called the processor. So basically the processor upgrading it will unlock being able to craft certain things and it'll give you a higher chance of more resources. So for example, if you want to upgrade ISOs, uh, one to a four star, the processor has to be eight, nine, 10, 11, and enchanted Urus, which is kind of the thing that goes onto your gear after you hit uh, count level 60, and that's basically what it is. And then you have XP chips and uniform upgrade kits. I can understand the uniform upgrade kits. I can't understand the XP chips. And this is one of the ones that you guys might be using. I think this is a really good one. And there's also more stuff too. Once you get up to 14, you can uh, do Norn Stones of Chaos and Black Antimatter. I'm not really sure what the crafting materials are for that because I don't think you can click it. But, for example, if you're doing the Doctor Strange quest where you need 1,200 uh, Norn Stones of Omnipotence and you don't need the Norn Stones of Brilliance, you can actually convert one for one. However, it's going to cost you 35,000 Antimatter and 150 gear. The gear is not really that bad. You're going to get that pretty easily. The Norn Stones are one for one. Mostly what you're paying for is Antimatter. Obviously, you are going to be spending gear, but really important. Now, the item shop is one of my favorites because um, there's more slots you can buy. You can even buy Norn Stones in here. I haven't seen Antimatter, but right, right there, Norn Stones of Strength. So you can spend 12,000 coins per Norn Stone and buy it. You can even get biometrics for gems for a specific character, but if you're going to be getting biometrics, you might as well pay money and get the offers. So you can get chips, you can get ISOs, you can get Norn Stones. And I'm sure that the higher the item shop is, the faster stuff's going to rotate out. But yes, the antimatter generator, getting that up as high as you can is one of the most important things. It is going to take a lot of gold to upgrade as you see rank 11 and I need shield account 34. So this is something that you're going to want to do on the side. Now, for a new player as well. One of the characters that they recommend the most get is Captain America Sharon Rogers. Now, I'm not too familiar with the game, as I haven't even been playing for an entire 28 days to get my first tier 2 ticket, but Sharon Rogers can output a lot of damage, and if you're not like me and saving for the Wolverine Deluxe Quest, her Starlight Armor is really good because it'll ignore dodge rate by 20%, which is basically more damage, because if the opponent can't dodge, then more of your hits are going to connect, and it does change five skills altogether. So that's a really big deal. And Freedom Strike doing a stun plus a chance to penetrate with super armor effect is really good. So this basically upgrades everything with Sharon Rogers. So if you have the gems and don't mind spending it, like right now it's discounted as I'm making this video on Friday, October 13th. 
So you double your pleasure and double your fun. So some other characters that are obviously good to upgrade. I've obviously upgraded Iron Man. I don't know if that's the best one. Um, Spider-Man is really good for PvP. I've found him to be super annoying when he just webs you and you can't do anything for a minute. Um, other than that, I'm sure that the community can refer some comments to that. I'm no expert as I don't have a really good roster. I have a bunch of one stars, not really anybody that's really promoted. I only have Thor and Iron Man up to 60 and I heard both of them are not great to tier 2 first. So there's that. Also in the epic quest, for example in Rise of the X-Men, as I'm currently working on first aid in the campaign. well. As far as going rogue goes, I actually beat the fourth battle with a tier 1 Iron Man. And the reason for that is because his gear had healing. So we're going to clear all of this. We're going to use 10 just because we can. So we're going to use 60 boost points for this. And rogue is going to go to 3 stars. However, you have to upgrade it in the actual thing. So then that will complete that quest. So we're going to go into our team. And we're going to go to two-star rogue, which probably is not that far up. There it is, 48 out of 40. So we're going to rank her up, 41,000 coins. Not that big of a deal. So there you go, three-star rogue. Let's show that with the alliance. So first aid epic quest is completed, and we're going to get 50 energy. And if it's deluxe, we get 40 Akron shards for being a mutant. And the fact that it's in the inbox is really cool. So... One thing to also pay attention to in this game is that energy recharges one per five minutes. Your boost points recharge one per minute and a half. So this is significant because if you're not in a hurry to actually spend your energy, you can actually maximize your boost point gain. For a new player, I've also heard of talk of Sandman being a really good one to pick up. I don't recommend doing the level by Sandman number three when it becomes available until you actually have a level 60 because if you get a vulture um whatever it's called uh not the ally shifter but the enemy shifter if you get a vulture it makes the fight five times harder and you might need an assist but this is obviously the source for gear obviously getting all the characters is good but i've heard a lot of good things about sandman so i'm kind of curious about that also, in the daily mission, you get a lot of resources. Let's do a quick battle to show that off. So, your dailies are two in a day. You're going to be able to do this twice a day. You could pay gems to do it again. I don't recommend it. And you're going to get Nornstones. You're going to get a decent amount of gold. Let's turn auto play off. So yes, I've mained Iron Man, but because I can actually get his biometrics, and Sharon Rogers is not so easy to get. I'm actually going to tier two Sharon Rogers. And then, who knows who I'll make my next uh, tier two after that. But I'm really looking forward to that. I should get my first uh, character to tier two within two days. And I think I'm on like day 26 of the events. But yeah, make sure you log in every day. And doing the dailies is actually not that bad. We'll get on that after the fight. So you can see we've already gotten 68,000 gold. We've gotten nine isos and a green nornstone so that's for doing the nornstones 115,000 gold and we got four known storms of energy and one of brilliance along with 10 iso so that's that one let's go next into golden xp chip even though i don't really need gold and you guys can kind of see the difference now i've done all of the dailies obviously all four difficulties just to kind of see what I could get. But yeah, it's not too bad. Now, this is obviously a good source for level 5 XP chips. I have a bunch of XP chips and food tickets that I do not use. As people have said, let's go get Sharon Rogers to 60. Why? What if a brand new character comes out that I really want to get leveled up and... I'd rather invest in that, whereas Sharon Rogers is probably going to hit level 60 in a day or two. So you can already see we're at 129,000 gold. And we got 41 XP chips. Obviously, if you need Nornstones, you can sacrifice a little bit of gold you're going to get. But it's pretty academic here. This fight is no challenge at all. 
Especially when you have the stun from special four and the three gives you invulnerability. So if you have enough cooldown, you can basically become immune to quite a bit of damage. As long as your opponent can get stunned, of course. And you're not surrounded by 50 guys in an alliance battle. So by doing that daily, we get 238,000 coins. And you can do two a day. So you're talking about 500,000 gold a day just for doing the daily. So Beyond Tenacity is done, so we're going to clear... 30 stages you get 60 energy which we're not going to take yet because you can kind of pick that up whenever i'm pretty sure that daily energy doesn't change over all the time but just in case so every day you're going to get daily challenges so these daily challenges reset every week so it's important to be able to get 30 of them done within a seven day period because every day you're going to get 25 gems and you're also going to get at least 60 energy so like for the first uh, the second day you're going to get 55 energy for free, you're going to get 45 clear tickets, 200,000 gold, another 100 energy, and then 30 gems. So that's really cool. Also, in the 28 day login, I'm not sure where I can see that at, there it is. So as you can see, I am a couple days away from actually getting my tier 2 advancement ticket. And that's how long I've been playing Marvel Future Fight, I haven't even been playing a month. So, seven day check in is also really good. Like, I get a day two reward for selector biometrics. I'm probably going to use that either on Sharon Rogers or there's two specific characters within the Doctor Strange event that they've said don't use biometrics for. One of them, I think you can select biometrics, and one, the only way you can actually do it is through upgrades or the 20 daily uh, biometric. But a six star rank up ticket on seven days is really cool. You obviously have eight days to do it, so if you miss two days, you're okay, but you should just begin it anyways. So there's that. Obviously, the alliance is a really big deal. Um, my alliance is full at the moment. Thank you guys that are donating gold. I'm trying to get the store up to level three. Because once you get the store up to level three, according to uh, John, you will get Selector Biometrics 20, which is a big deal. As you can see, I have 200 alliance tokens. So I could purchase energy with alliance tokens, and all you get that for is just donating gold. So it's not a bad thing to do. And if you win 90 timeline battles, you get 30 energy. And over a span of a week, you get 50 energy just for free. So if you have an active alliance, this shouldn't be a problem to get as long as you hit a 50% win rate, basically. So not too bad. So when it comes to biometrics in the story, now this is really important because obviously... Like right now, my energy would recharge every seven hours. So, um, certain characters you will get, like right away you're going to get Captain America five stars. So, basically, look through the chapters here. So, if you see a character that you can farm biometrics for, this is obviously for new players. I recommend not picking them as either somebody that you're going to journey with or somebody that you're just going to instantly take to a six-star master. So, I'm going to kind of go through all of these stages. And if you see anybody on the list, I recommend not picking them. Now, Sharon Rogers is a great one to pick up for your six-star mastery in the beginning. The journey, I'm not really sure who to pick up for that. If you could pick up Sandman, that might be a decent one too. But again, that's one you can get out of the uh, daily mission. So I don't know how wise that is. So again, the community might have some better advice. I'm kind of just showing you guys... Some of the stuff I've learned as a new player and giving that off to you guys. So you can kind of see Green Goblin finally makes an appearance here as well. And certain characters are going to have more than one stage for biometrics. Like Captain America has three stages you can farm for biometrics. Iron Man's going to have three stages to farm for biometrics. So don't do like me and pick Iron Man right away. Level them up over time. But you want to pick up somebody that you're not going to be able to get for biometrics. And yeah. If you can farm for them, don't pick them up. So every day, you're able to get 10 biometrics. And for example, Deathlock is in Chapter 10 in three stages. So I recommend against picking Deathlock to actually get. So you can farm all three of these, and every day you're going to get materials. Now, you want to pay attention. And this is especially important when you're upgrading the lab. You have to fight in Chapter 8 and below in order to get component packs or to get Stark branded blueprints. I think this is absolutely dumb, as it should be in higher chapters so you can farm XP a little bit quicker, but to each their own. Now, again, Spider-Man is a really good one to get. 
He'd be he'd probably be a good one to journey so you can use him in PvP. One that I would recommend because oftentimes I do get obliterated by Spider-Man's in Arena. But yeah, farm the biometrics. You can farm up to 10 a day. So it's a lot more generous than Injustice 2 if you guys have played that game. So good stuff there. So also, um, you saw the daily missions in action. Special missions is where you can farm biometrics. But it's also important because there's three quest packs. You have to get all four of these in order to get Dormammu. And then you have to upgrade him using uh, antimatter and Macron shards. And I don't think it's Macron shards, but you have to upgrade uh, Dormammu through other means. So as soon as you get 200 hidden routes, you have Dormammu unlocked. You go into War of Kings, and you can get some of the people more extra fragments. You obviously want to start with the Dormammu route, but you can select any active quest that you want. And you can get some good gear doing this one as well. You can also get some energy. You can get some North Stones as well if you upgrade Mysterio, Lizard, Rhino, Craven the Hunter, and also Vulture and Sandman, which Vulture you get for the Shifters, which is super annoying when you're getting Sandman. But yeah, these quest packs are pretty cool and a lot of fun. And if you get the Hidden Stage, now this is one that you definitely want to complete right away. Also, Dimension Rifts. This is a really cool aspect of the game because this is where you get your comic cards from, mostly. So there's three stages of completion rewards, and this is where an active alliance or an active streamer, like Synagogue, for example, does have an advantage because if you have people that watch your stream, generally they're going to be playing the game, and more than likely, if you're on a schedule, say streaming schedule, or if you know people are going to be on at a certain time, run the rifts together because the first time you get it, you get 300,000 gold, the second time you get 200 dimension degrees. And the third time you get 100 energy and all of these are completely free just for participating in Dimension Rifts. I highly recommend at minimum getting the 300,000 gold, but obviously more the merrier. Now, the difficulties do matter a little bit, but the VIP is basically pay to win. So if you buy gems, your VIP rank is going to go up. So also when you raise your rank, you're going to get more slots available for people to help you in Dimension Rifts. It does make a difference because obviously... If you can have eight people in a Dimension Rift when you're doing the sixth battle, that means you're only going to have to need four people or four missions per person to hit 100%, and that's easy to get in like five minutes. So you can also go on the status board and see everything that is available. Co-op play rewards required. So in co-op play, you have to get four star and level 40 in order to actually participate. So anybody that's 4 star and level 40, you can actually participate in co-op play in order to receive rewards. So the rewards are also dependent on your VIP rank. So if your VIP is 0, you're going to get nothing for rewards. And just so you guys can see, I am 100% free to play. There you can see VIP 0. How long that will actually stay, I'm not 100% sure. And we'll just have to see on that. So timeline battle is a mode kind of like Arena. I kind of find it funny that you're running into like overpowered silver people at 1,050 points. I think Arena definitely needs balancing or timeline battles. And I don't know if it's just inactive people clogging up the rankings, but there needs to be something I think done as far as the uh, timeline events go because you could be fighting level 53s that you can obliterate. You could fight level 60s that are bad, but then you get overrun by Spider-Man, Sharon Rogers, and Doctor Strange, and there's nothing you can do. And that's at like 1050 in silver, so I really don't understand that. Obviously, once I get more tier 2 characters, I can probably bypass that, but there's that. World Boss is also something I'm not able to do yet, but as soon as I can tier 2 Sharon Rogers, I might be able to do that. So, in order to actually unlock Quicksilver, you have to do all of these feats. And you can get, uh, then you get Quicksilver Unlocked, which is also a decent card. Cable is also really good that I've heard. Um, then there is Thanos, that's also decent. And there's World Boss Beginner. Now, when it comes to World Bosses, there are uh, extra bonuses, like ally effects that you get if you have more than four people at a six-star mastery. Or actually at six stars. Because you have to have six stars in order to participate in the world boss. So 
if you have allies at that, you're going to get more effects. And if you're able to do the world boss, definitely do the world boss. Now, there is also another form of world boss. It is not that. So if you go into co-op, world boss invasion. So you can do this as much as you want with whatever characters you get. And it's kind of cool because it does kind of have that Clash Royale um, Titanfall uh, feel where you get supply chest. And you get decent rewards out of it. It does cost 10 energy to do all of the um, things, but you can use anybody in there and it'll boost them up to 60. Obviously, if you have skills and other things invested, you're going to do decent damage, but more than likely you're going to get people that will carry you. So it's a nice way to get free gold. Like if you're sitting on energy or if you have no boost points, that's when you actually want to do this. And as long as you complete one co-op mission, you're going to get all of these rewards. Everyone unlocks on a different day. So obviously if 10,000 people complete it, which is super easy in the game, you're going to get all of the rewards. You're going to get a comic card chest, 250,000 gold, another chest, 300 dimension debris, another chest, 500,000 gold, and an enchanted Uru chest, rare. You're gonna get a three star Uru for no reason. So, one other thing I'm gonna talk about is the cards in the game. Obviously, I don't have optimized cards. Like Ant-Man the Wasp, Mind Resist, Ignore Defense, Energy Defense is not a good card. But I kinda just had it in there to ignore the defense. Uh, Avengers, Attack Speed, Crit Damage, not really a good one. Obviously, the random options are crap, but I kinda just threw that in there. Amazing Spider-Man, I got 8% attack speed, 8% dodge, defense, poison, fire resist. Again, not a great card, but it's a card. Star-Lord, ignore defense, critical rate. I find this one to actually be decent. And uh, Marvel Battle World Zombies, dodge cooldown duration. So one card I've been working on is the Loki card. The reason for that is because it increases all of your attack and it gives you cooldown duration. So... Basically, there's your card effects right there. So, 5.5 cooldown reduction. A lot of people say 30% cooldown is like the best. Once you get over 30% cooldown, it's really good. Like, when you go into Iron Man, for example, but also in the game is uniforms, and you can kind of get various extra buffs. Custom gear unlocks at level 30. Obviously, I don't really have a good one here, but the extra help did help me uh, three-star the Rogue event. ISO 8s are a really big deal because you get various set bonuses. Obviously, offense recommendation, you get more attack, cooldown duration, all attack, ignore defense is really good. So, like, those are the offensive ones. And also, Stark back in a really good one. Activation rate when you get hit to get max hit points. I'm also Groot is a really good one. Spy tactics can reduce cooldowns, which is decent as well. There's just so many ISOs, so as long as you have all the ISOs, you got that. Skills, obviously, you want to take them up to level 6 if you're investing in the character. And level 20 gear unlocks the Urus, which are kind of extra stats once you get them. So you have to get level 30, or shield level 60 in order to get the uh, Urus slots. But yeah, there's that. So within the Alliance, or actually within the in-game, you can also claim for Assemble Points. Assemble Points are used for various things in the store. So when you get the Assemble Points, you go to Recharge Energy, and you can spend the Assemble Points to get free energy, up to three a day. So you can get 75 energy a day from Assemble Points, and if you have an active friends list, you can get that really easily. Net Marble is really good when it comes to actually giving you more energy, and it's really cool there. So, best thing I can suggest is use the status board and try and do as much as you can. Villain Siege is really good for getting that, and as you can see, we have a bunch of bonus rewards. So, let's take Thor, and let's use some bonus characters. We could obviously use all three if we had a level 60, but I don't see a problem with Thor actually beating Maestro, but if not, we'll throw somebody else in there. So, 364,000 health. And there's various shops also for the different currency as well. Here we are taking some decent damage on Thor. 
Obviously, I don't have him developed. Let's play Cowardy. Obviously, that acid is going to be annoying. So if Thor goes down, we're going to have to use somebody else. 100%. Looks like he is going to go down there. Yeah. Thor is not as good as Sharon Rogers, so we could retry. Let's throw in a garbage character. The cool thing about Villain Siege is that health does not carry over, so if you soften somebody up, you should have a problem with it. As you can see, Sharon Rogers has no problem compared to Thor. We miss out on two bonuses versus one, but we get six Norn Stones of Strength and we get four Biometrics for Phil Coulson. So every time you do a Villain Siege, you're going to get 500. I didn't even know I was supposed to be past that, so uh, we already finished that part for Villain Siege, so wasn't even trying for that. So Story Mission clear three stages. Again, that's an easy one, so... That'll give Wolverine a tier one master or one star mastery. So yeah, completing the story is really good. So in the chaos shop, you can get all kinds of stuff within there. You can buy a few rank one black antimatter Norn Stones of Chaos, uh, Chaos Chest, which can get you bio random biometrics. Um, you can also get Ant Man, also Bloodstone Lash. You can also outright buy Norn Stones of Brilliance and Omnipotence at one per one hundred and sixty-five. And Honor Tokens are also another currency you can use to get the other Norn Stones as well as other biometrics for like Gamora, Captain Marvel, Warwolf. And basically the same thing, you can use Honor Tokens to get biometrics. It's basically just more currency. So there's a lot within Marvel Future Fight and there's some really good stuff within this game. So I'm obviously no pro. The people that have been watching my YouTube videos and Twitch streams on Marvel Future Fight have been awesome. And there's a lot more that I hope to learn. If there's something I haven't covered below, Please leave that down there. Obviously, the Alliance battle can get you some free loot. Not going to do that within this video, but again, this is stuff that you always want to clear. You want to clear all of this stuff every day. So there's at least an hour, hour and a half worth of stuff to do every day. And if you're serious about progressing Marvel Future Fight, I highly recommend it. But if you like this video on Marvel Future Fight tips and tricks and some ways to help you play the game, if you're a new viewer on Hollywood Show No Streams, YouTube videos, or you want to get into Marvel Future Fight yourself, I highly recommend this video. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, and have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show Subscribe, bitches! <laughs>